mic on. Well, thank you very much uh, for inviting me here. There's a lot of, obviously, a lot of expectation, a lot of pressure. Just to remind you, I'm not the minister already, so actually I can't make things happen. But I will tell Desmond to sort things out so that you don't have to worry. But maybe let me start off. I mean, we have, uh, I mean, thank you very much, especially for the speakers earlier, for sharing your experiences. And frankly, I'm preaching to the converted. Clearly, Tamasek, the Tamasek Group and the portfolio companies, you have many, many different things that you're doing. But what I would like to do uh, is really to let's revisit the fundamentals. I always believe that it's important to, even though there's something that we do it constantly, we do it all the time, but it's always useful to refresh, to reframe, and to remind ourselves exactly what are we doing. And more importantly, why are we doing this? Why, why is this commitment for good so important? We all mouth this off. Strategically, we all agree. That's not, a, that's not an issue. But why is it so important? Now, all of you are leaders, right? And I'm sure, and something that I always feel it's important for us to be able to do is to be able to stand up and articulate your own leadership philosophy, your own beliefs about what really makes a difference as a leader at, a, at an organizational level, for example. And I guess we will have di different definitions, sometimes variations on the same themes, but what is it about leadership? What is it about our companies that really make a difference? What truly makes a difference? Well, we have different answers, I'm sure, but I would say people, just to build on what Eric shared at the end. People. People make things happen. People create processes, structures. We know that the world is uncertain. There are a lot of unknowns, unknown unknowns out there, but people are the ones that eventually will rally around and figure out what needs to be done, what the solutions are, and eventually deliver the touch points on the ground, right? So it is about people. You need people to be competent, so that's given. And not that it's straightforward, but we need to make sure that they're competent, they're able, capable. But what is it that really makes an organization great? What is it about the people that makes an organization great? It's about belief. It's about values. It's about going the extra mile. It's because I believe that this is something worth going the extra mile for. Whether is it purpose, whether is it a climate that's created, whether it's the leaders that I have, or the leadership team that I have, or the cause that I'm serving, it makes me want to go the extra mile, to really put in effort to figure out the solutions, to work the problems through, right? And that's what makes great organizations great, and perhaps sustainable for the long haul. Not the focus on the immediate term, but when people's hearts and minds are in the right place, frankly, what is it that you can't achieve? Would you agree? But we often focus on the short-term things, things that we can measure, things that we can do, things that we are comfortable with. But the art of leadership, how do you actually engender this sense of response from your people? Not always so clear. Sometimes it seems very fuzzy, very wooly, very soft. Why don't we focus on the hard things? So we know that it matters. Certainly it matters as an individual. You know that your values matter, matter tremendously as a person. The culture that you imbibe, your ethos, similarly for a company. But what about the country? Is this important? Is it any less important as a nation? We focus on the economy, which is important, because if the economy doesn't do well, we won't have the wherewithal to do all the good things we want to do. We wouldn't be able to provide jobs to allow our fellow citizens to fulfill their aspirations. We need to cater for security. There's a lot of uncertainty around, around the world, certainly in, around the region, and certainly, you know, uh, these are issues that we will grapple with. Healthcare, which is probably one of the biggest public sector policy concerns because of longevity, et cetera, et cetera. Education, preparing for the future. So you do need all these hard policies, ideas to be able to be realized but they're still the heart and soul of a nation that we need to cater for. And we all sort of know that, because if it applies to us as individuals, it applies to us as families, it applies to us as companies, surely, as a nation, it matters as well. You know, there are many, many different values that are important. Right? And I'm sure we can all mouth off all the different things, and I'm, I'm sure they all matter a great deal. But what are the things that really perhaps makes a difference for us as a nation? My sense is, is a capacity to care for others, to moving from the me and to focus on also the we. Because inherently, don't you think, I mean, if you think about it as individuals, as human beings, there's one part of us that's inherently selfish. 
the sense of self-entitlement, we are looking out for ourselves, we want to do well, which is, there's nothing wrong about it, but that self gets in the way of many things. Even as a leader, whether you're prepared to put your neck on the line for your staff, because you may not score many points with your bosses, for example, but would you do that? So a lot of it comes from self, and that's very, I guess, very natural. But I think what makes us human as well is the capacity to love, to have compassion. That makes us, I think, humans. And as St. Francis says, it's in giving that we receive. You have a vehicle for, to love somebody. Loving somebody who really have no reason to love, to care for, to put in time, to put in effort. So we have that, I think, both qualities within us. But as a nation, I think if we are inherently just selfish, self-seeking, what you end up with is it will translate to pressure, expectations, to do more for what? For myself. As opposed to perhaps compromise, willing to accept that perhaps I'm not going to get everything, but for the greater good, we need to do that. I need to compromise the present because I need to look out for the future. Trade-offs that as individual Singaporeans, we need to do. So we need to tend to the heart and soul of a nation. But how do you tend to that? How do you become better people? Is it possible to really become a very different society where we genuinely care for others and not just for ourselves? And values is something that I don't think is just being taught in school that, that matters. I mean, many people talk about, oh, no, last time we have this Hao Kong Ming. As if it's like you bring back Hao Kong Ming, suddenly we all become good Singaporeans. It doesn't work that way, right? And, but I think the schools, they've now called the program Values in Action. Right? Those of you who are parents, you know, VIA, Values in Action. I think it's a very apt term. Because values is realized in action. And this is where I would put to you that the why about why this is so important is that if indeed you imagine what other ways do we have to begin to infuse, inculcate these values in us as a society? Think about it. What other ways do you have to begin to build a better society? You can talk about it, you can give speeches, you can teach it in schools which helps. But how else do you really help us begin to realign the way we look at life, our own expectations, our own drives? My sense, this is my personal conviction, is that it is through giving. It is through giving that we receive. Just last week, my very last event as the Minister of Social and Family Development, it just so happens I was at Cheshire Home. And I realized that it was uh, quite apt in a way because my sense and social consciousness, I suppose, and realization of some of these ideas really started off not so much just in Cheshire Home, but in 2009 when I was organizing National Day, 2009. We had a lot of outreach programs, like many of you have shared, all sorts of good ideas about reaching out, getting people to be involved, the whole idea of being inclusive. So Cheshire Home was one of the places we went to get the residents to help pack the fun pack so they can tag the fun pack so that when someone receives the fun pack, they know, oh, someone from Cheshire Home, and what's this Cheshire Home about? Because we wanted Singaporeans to remember those who perhaps are left behind, who we often forget. We went to prisons, we were with Silver Ribbon, etc., etc. We went to Assisi Hospice. But my big takeaway from that whole journey then was that it wasn't just about including them and helping them. It was an impact on my people, my officers and men who were involved. It had an impact on their lives. Because for one, they learn to be, I think, circumspect about their own lot in life. When you work with children with special needs and if you're parents, doesn't it make you realize that perhaps I should be just be glad and grateful that my children are blessed and they are healthy and, and well? And I think that effect you begin to realize is that's where the real change begins to happen. It's an impact on us. And I begin to realize that the social sector isn't just about helping the elderly, the poor, the disabled, the disadvantaged, but it's an opportunity to bring the rest of us on board to reach out and make the difference to them, but in the process, changing us. Because there's no other way, I think, that we can be changed. And when we change and we begin to believe that this is important, guess what? We actually will end up doing more, doing better, and we're going to drag others alongside us and probably going to be sustainable because we're going to do it for the long haul. But we must have faith and believe that indeed that change effect can happen. For example, I'm an MP in Kamangan Chai Chi. I have seven blocks of rental flats. You talk to the children there. Hey, how's your PSLE? I pass. I got one seven something or one eight something or whatever it is. They're just happy to get to secondary school. What are our conversations? Oh yeah, my son 245, they cannot go to RI. How? 
Our sense of reality sometimes gets warped because we aren't, aren't quite so exposed. We talk about the issues passionately, emotionally, but are we committing time and effort to actually know the issues? But I think that by helping, I think it learns, it helps us manage our expectations. It helps us learn to be circumspect about life. I think that's important. Secondly, as you help others, I think it also allows, uh, provides you a vehicle to begin to express your compassion and love. And I think there is a change effect. And for those of you who actively spend time, I think you know what I mean. So if that is indeed so, then how do you, and with these lenses, let's look at what we're doing on the CSR front. These are not just activities. This is one way, perhaps, that we can really begin to build a different society in the way we carry out the activities. So it's not just activities for its own sake, because there are many activities, and you, and you know how it is. Oftentimes, you just jump into the activity, the logistics, the safety, and everything else, make sure you deliver the outcomes. But the, we must also think about, are we achieving that impact on the giver? Are we achieving that impact on our people who are participating? Curating the experience, I think, is important. Sometimes even the VWO. So there are two parts. There's the giver, which is where you all are as the companies, as the corporates. And now that we believe it, then how do we actually organize ourselves to be able to carry out some of these activities? Some activities have better impact than others. So for example, when some of my, my children, when they do their VIA program, then they go to SCWO and paint the walls. Okay, but I don't think it has a kind of the same impact as when they went to Kongwashu Hospital to talk to the elderly and spend time. Different impact. Not that it doesn't matter to paint the walls in SEWO or whatever that may be, but some activities have more and deeper emotive impact than others. So you're beginning to see that actually more companies are beginning to want to do more, to do good, to do it more sustainable, but they, they have a glimpse about that something extra that we could do differently. But sometimes we don't know where to go. So this is where I would appeal to you to consider exploring, partnering with us and CSS, uh, SG Care's team. We want to broker. Denise talked about brokering. We need to broker the demand and supply. Because sometimes we want to do better, we want to do it differently, but where do I go? So the VWOs, the homes, etc., there'll be one. The other one is actually lo location-based. Where you are, for example, if you are sited near Topayo, let's like say where MSF is, your Philips was there or other companies were there, you have a old folks living in, in HDB flats in Topayo. These may not be very glamorous projects, but actually a lot of elderly folks could be isolated. Actually, because it's just nearby, you could actually arrange for your employees to visit. One, some will be once a week, some may be once a quarter, once a two weeks, whatever it may be, depending on the needs. You create small teams and share the load, the burden is not so heavy, but it meets a very real need. So we need to be a lot more needs driven, not project driven. Rather than searching for one project after another, let's really understand what the needs are on the ground. And these needs may not be complicated, they may not be glamorous, but they really make a difference. Especially aging, with the numbers that we're talking about, increasingly more and more elderly being isolated, both in private estates, low income, etc. It, it cuts across income, income levels. But those are things that we can do. But I also need to work on the demand side. Okay. That means at the, at the receptacles. Not all VWOs are ready and they know how to take in. Suddenly, if all of you volunteer, I've got a problem because they don't know how to reuse. They don't know how to use you effectively. So we need to work on that side as well. I need to change the business processes. Such as when a MOM, right? We talk about tightening manpower, you should be more productive, how should you run your... If you don't re-engineer your work processes, you are still stuck doing the same old things. But we need the VWOs to think that, look, some of these things, actually, I can tap on volunteers to do it. I'll, I'll give you, for example, the Japanese community here. A lot of the ladies volunteer at various organizations. Cheshire Home is one, Mines. And if, let's say, they anchor one afternoon, a couple of hours, basically that's one afternoon catered for. Programs will be done. You free up your resources to be able to train resources to do other things. So we need to organize on the receptacle end, both in the VWOs, in the locale base as well. So as a local MP advisor, we need to sort ourselves out to understand the ground so that we can know what the needs are. And then the companies who are keen to do something, let's begin to match and curate that partnership. And on your end, really, is that if we believe that this really makes a difference, not just you know, in terms of making a difference to the individuals, but really make a difference to our society, then perhaps that's something for us to think about in terms of applying ourselves. Not just having lots of activities, which is important, but how those activities are carried out. How do you curate it? How do you collaborate so that we can better, we can be more effective? Our end of exciting perhaps is an example. Kids Start, which is something we started. 
uh, that we want to basically go all the way upstream. It's not about development, it's not about education for children from vulnerable homes, it's about dealing with inequalities. It's about dealing with poverty, breaking the cycle upstream. And imagine, because a lot of these kids don't necessarily have the exposure, they may not have the role modeling at home, some of the parents just don't have the wherewithal, but imagine if we are able to partner the program and say, look, we are able to run a reading program once a week. Another company said, look, I'll anchor Wednesday, you anchor Monday, we can run, and then we can figure out what the commitment level is, and you could have actually volunteers from your companies helping a particular program to basically help these children get a lot more exposure than they would otherwise have had. And you can begin to see how you can begin to scale this. Because at the end of it, boutique solutions, boutique pilots will always work well, but frankly, it doesn't, can't be sustainable and can't be replicated. But a lot of the things that are needed on the ground are not hugely complex. It's really about us collaborating better on the demand side and the supply side. But this is where I, I will say that it's imperative that perhaps for us to think about, and many of you are already involved, and the Tomasi Group has, I mean, in terms of your, your setup, in terms of the focus on giving back to society is tremendous. But I think what I ask is that perhaps let's really ask ourselves again the very fundamental question about why do we want to inspire giving? Why is this commitment for good? Because I think ultimately what we're trying to do is actually build a very, very different society. Can we be a different society, completely different from any others? Because you have the reach, you have the ground networks, you have the ability small enough, you have the different, the government agencies are tight enough that we can coordinate with the VWOs and with the companies. I think there's every opportunity for us to build a very different Singapore. Rather than going on and on about this, that, the other, but maybe it allows us to temper expectations, manage the demand side on many fronts. You talk about happiness, well, we can't be giving more as a government, certainly, to make us happy, but perhaps it is through this process as well. So the receptacles are this, schools. So we're trying to work with schools. They have a VIA program. Can the vision be every child that leaves school actually want to do good, want to give, want to care? Is it conceivable that we structure the programs, curate the programs, so it's done well? And then they enter the workforce, which is where we are. Are we able to provide opportunities to continue that journey? And at home, in our own physical homes, in our community, can we actually structure some of these programs? Society is made out of individuals. When individuals, you can imagine the individual experiences and how they begin to change, and you've experienced some of that. If individuals begin to change, society begins to change. And that's where I think you're gonna build a more sustainable Singapore. We just celebrated SG50, but you're gonna to get to SG100? Yes, your solid economy, the security, and everything else that we all are familiar with but you need to tend to the heart and soul of the nation. And perhaps this is the one way that we can do that. And I think all of you can play a part in that. So with that, thank you very much.